Hey there you guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be rehabbing this Alocasia poly. Such a beautiful plant, well not this one. This one's not off awful, but it's not great. Uh, it's, uh, it's seen better days. It's been sitting in the, uh, in the grow tent for a little while and it, it's been doing a little bit better. Uh, but in the house over winter, the humidity is rather low uh, for this guy. I think we rested about 40, 45%. These guys would actually like to be higher, above 50 anyway. Uh, so and if, you, if you have higher, it wants higher. Uh, so in the summertime here, they grow beautifully. Uh, so I don't know why I haven't taken this outside yet. It's been in the grow tent, just hanging out in the back. Uh, and uh, it looks like hell. So what happens over time is... Um, they develop long trunks, and uh, and you'll notice when the trunk gets longer, the leaves don't necessarily uh, get any bigger. They kind of stay, or they get a little smaller. In my in my uh, in my experience, they uh, they tend to get smaller, uh, and they don't get as big. Uh, the new vigorous growth, or the when when you cut these off and plant them back in the soil, uh, they get a new vigor to them, and the leaves are bigger. Uh, they're brighter. They're they're just really really pretty. So. Uh, actually trimming these and, and giving them a new lease, lease on life actually helps it out a lot. So if you're noticing your alocasia in general, I guess alocasia, xanthosoma, and colocasia might be all in the same group, but I don't think colocasia creates the trunk like this. They have more of a corm. Um, the alocasia produces the trunk. So let's let's go with that. If you see a trunk, uh, then that's that's what we're dealing with. Anyway, as you can see, this one here has split into three. We've got the main stem here, and then we've got a baby here and a baby here. Uh, that's actually sucking a lot of the energy out of the plant. Um, so that's why we're getting smaller leaves. These leaves can get uh, not massive, but still maybe 12 inches long, uh, maybe a little bit longer if you're lucky. And they look beautiful. They are really, really thick, very leathery. Uh, they're not velvety at all. Uh, so yeah, really really cool cool plant. So they, they 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 like high humidity in the summertime when they're growing like crazy. They want to be constantly moist. Uh, in the winter time when they're in the house, I scale back the watering because they kind of go a little bit dormant, semi dormant. Unless they start losing their leaves, then I want to keep it more dry. Um, so what I've done here is I've got a a new pot. I'm gonna pot it in this thing. Uh, this pot is really, really pretty. I put uh, my Alocasia fry deck in, in one of these as well, a slightly different color, but still the same pot nonetheless. Uh, this is probably about an 8 inch or a 9 inch pot. And then I've got uh, my soil that I pre-mixed here, and I'm throwing it on the table. Uh, so this is a mix of uh, Promix uh, BX. It's a pre-mixed uh, peat-based soil with... Um, with perlite, and I believe there's macorrhiza or macorrhizae, the uh, the fun fungus in there, uh, to help uh, root development and whatnot. And I also added some coconut husk chips, uh, coconut bark. So that's going to be a really really good thing to add aeration to the soil, uh, and uh, the, the, it's going to love that. It, the, these these plants like to have a very loose mix. They like it to be water retentive, but not it doesn't want to be sitting in muck. So that, that's really, really good. They like a lot of airflow to the roots. And I also added some slow release fertilizer. Uh, this is uh, 101010 by Miracle Grow, and it's a slow release plant food. Uh, because sometimes I'm a little bit lazy with my, my fertilizing. Outside I'm better. I connect the fertilizer to the hose and I just go around and water everything. But in the house, uh, putting it in uh, the watering cans, it, sometimes I forget. Plants need a drink, I quickly give it a drink, I don't, uh, I don't mix fertilizer every time. So the slow release fertilizer helps me out a bunch. So I've also got a plant tray <laughs> to put the pot in. Anyway, uh, let's move this down and uh, we'll, we'll get to hacking and chopping. Oh, uh, tools you might need is a pruner or a sharp knife. Uh, whatever works better for you, just be careful with uh, a knife if you choose that uh, because uh, sometimes these can be a little bit hard and you don't want to uh, cut yourself. Anyway, come on down. We'll uh, we'll chop this to bits and have a good time with it. Okay, so here we go. We got uh, this plant. Let's uh, see what the root system looks like. The root system actually looks really really nice. Got a lot of nice white roots. That's what you want to see for a nice healthy plant. Um, the roots on alocasia can get quite thick. Uh, here's a little baby. We'll pot that up on its own, or maybe not on its own, but in the pot just separately. We're gonna make a nice little. Uh, grouping 
just want to remove some of the soil. You're going to notice with a lot of alocasia, they produce these little uh, little dormant bud, uh, bulbs. Uh, so you want to just uh, keep those. We'll pop those into the soil. They might grow. They might not. It just looks like a clump of soil. Oh, this one's dead. <laughs> Let me open this up. Maybe it's still alive. No, nah, this one's dead. But I'll still put it back in just in case. You never know. Uh, but they produce a lot of these in my, my uh, experience. And... Uh, when you put them in, in soil, like sometimes if you reuse your soil, you'll get an alocasia start to grow um, in the pot. And you're like, well, I never ever had an alocasia growing there. Here's another one. Uh, this one looks like it's starting to break free and start to get a little bit pink. So save that. Occasionally I throw this soil out in the garden, and uh, that's where I get the, the, the new growth. One year I had all kinds of um, alocasia... Um, what is it? Uh, regal shields growing everywhere. <laughs> okay, so I've got enough of the soil off the roots, I guess. And if you break any roots, don't worry about it. Uh, these guys regrow roots like crazy. So as long as your plant is healthy, don't worry. Don't worry so much. All right. So now we've got basically everything off of the root system. So now we can separate these guys out. This one, I'm not going to cut back, but what I'm going to do is I will plant this one deeper. I want to plant this one so that the, uh, the soil comes right up to about here, uh, and it's going to root out along its stem. And I'm just going to clean off all of the, uh, the dead growth, because I want to make sure that the roots are able to escape the, uh, the, the dead leaf bits. Sometimes, if, uh, if the, in my opinion, uh, sometimes if you leave the, the husks on the side, the roots start to develop, but it stays dry behind the husk. So by removing that husk, it really allows the roots to, to jump out and, and uh, grow into the soil easier. So, but that's just my own opinion. So let's, uh, this one's nice and clean now, looking good. We'll move that to the side. This one here, more of the same. I might not cut this one back. I might just plant it deeper. But I could, I could cut it back. I could cut it to here and and then just plant this little section, and it will survive. And then chances are, if I actually let's do that, let's cut it right here. I'm going to plant this in the soil as well, because what's going to happen is it's probably going to. Uh, put out little side shoots because it still has some roots here. It's still going to try to to nourish itself, uh, and chances are we're going to get another uh, baby plant coming from this point. So we'll move that off to the side. We got this one off to the side. Remove any of the the dry bits. You'll notice here there's little I don't know whether you're able to see, but there's little uh, little nubbins. Those are probably going to turn into roots. So just. Uh, Watch them grow. You could probably even put this in a little bit of water uh, to, to watch it grow, but I would, I would recommend planting it directly in soil. All right, just removing some of these leaves. Also, by removing these bits of leaves, uh, you're taking away hiding spots for bugs. If you've had a bug infestation, whether it's mealybugs or scale or whatever, uh, they like to, to hide out in these little crevices. And also, removing as much soil as possible, if you've had an infestation, it's probably a good idea because, like I said, they, they like to hide everywhere and hiding in the soil is, um, is very common. So, okay. So what I want to do with this one in particular, I want to break off these side sections. So I could just go in and just snap it off. This one already has a root developing, so uh, I'm already uh, ahead of the game here. Again, I'm removing all the little husks. This one also has a lot of uh, root development here, so this one's gonna. This one actually wanted to be broken off, so put that off to the side. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. This one doesn't look like it has too many roots developing, but uh, that's all right. It will remove all the little husks. There we go. It looks beautiful. It looks so pretty. So I'm just going to leave that little bit of a husk around this the new leaf that's trying to develop. 
uh, just as a little bit of protection. Sometimes if I remove that, I might damage the leaf a bit. So, and then with this one, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to remove the husks a bit, because this is a little bit too tall to put in the pot. Uh, it's going to go right to the bottom, so I don't want that. I'm just going to cut this right here. And you know what? Let's throw caution to the wind. And I'm going to cut this in half yet again. This has some new growth that's actually starting right here. I don't know whether you're able to see. There's a little bit of a pink by my fingernail. A little pink thing developing. So that's going to be a new growth. It might be a new leaf. It might be a new root. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut here. What you want to do is you want to make sure that there's at least two or three little leaf joints. Uh, you don't really know, but, but uh, each line is basically a leaf joint or you can't see it very well, <laughs> you might know. Um, but if you're able to see it a little bit closer, you'll see that there's like leaf joints. This probably has about five little leaf joints. So you want to have at least two or three, and uh, that will make a nice, uh, a nice cutting. So with this, you can plant it, if you forget which way up was, which I do now, forget, uh, you can plant it on its side, and it will root just the same. Uh, so then this one is going to go on its side as well. Actually, this, this way is up. So I'll plant this one in the soil like this because the roots are all pointing down. So that's an easier tell for me. <laughs> just going to cut this long root off. And I'm just going to clean up the table a bit and then let's get to planting. Okay, so we got the pot ready. I uh, cleaned up the table a bit. I'm going to put a piece of paper towel in the bottom just to uh, protect the hole from, from uh, soil coming out the bottom. I've got my mix of uh, potting soil. Uh, it's the chunky mix that I'm going to use for the uh, for the aeroids. And you'll notice as I put this in, it's it's quite uh, quite chunky. My mix was basically 50% um, uh, peat potting mix, the the pro mix, and then 50% uh, coconut husk. And in the um, in the peat mix, there's perlite, as you can see. So it just it adds everything. It, it's really, really good. And you'll see the, uh, the slow release fertilizer in there too, the little beads. Uh, so I guess I'm going to add more soil. I forgot that I cut everything into smaller bits, so I don't need to, uh, I don't need to uh, have a lot of space at the bottom, free space to, to push stuff in. Okay, so yeah, I still need to add more soil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's just fill it almost to the top. All right, there we go. So I pre-moistened this soil. Just so it wouldn't be so dusty. I didn't think I would use all of this soil. Hmm. It was a lot. Anyway, um, so now I'm just going to take it and I want to find my nicest ones and plant those closer to the center. Uh, so that would be my three big pieces. So I'm just going to make a little hole and then plunk it down. And I want to make sure with this particular one, I want to make sure that the uh, the soil goes up to about this point. I've got a little critter, a little uh, sow bug, a little potato uh, pill bug. Uh, so I just uh, get rid of that, and uh, I want to make sure that the soil is about up to this line here. I don't want to bury the new leaf. Alright. So I'm going to add a little soil to the top of this, so I'm just going to lift it a bit. And same thing with this one. I want to bury up to here. You'll see that there's new little roots starting to develop here, so I want to make sure that those are in the soil. So I'll make another little hole and then poke it in. Again, we're going to add a little bit of soil to the to the mix as well. So we're going to uh, to raise the soil level up a bit. And again, here I'm going to make sure that it goes up to about this level here. Poke it in. Because there's no roots happening, you might need to put a stake in here for a little bit just to. Uh, to make sure that, that things find their, their way to straight up. But in a few weeks time when the roots start to develop you won't need anything. So this one here, I didn't really think this one through. <laughs> I'm going to just plant it off to the side. Make sure that the roots are covered. We're going to throw a little bit more soil in here at when we're done. So 
no need to worry about that. This particular one, I'm not sure which side is up, so I'm going to plant this off to the side. You could plant this in a bed of sphagnum moss and just keep it moist and see where all the uh, growth comes from, but I'm going to throw caution to the wind and I'm just going to put it to the side here. I'm just going to rest it on the soil surface and then when we add more soil it's going to almost cover it. You don't want to cover that completely. And then this one here we got a nice long piece. I'm just going to pop that in here as well. I'm going to put it off to the side. And this one, like I said before, I want to I want to make sure that it's up to this level here. All right. There we go. And we got a couple more pieces. This is going to be a really full pot. So this one we got root system like crazy again. I'm just going to cut some of these roots off. All right. So this one yeah, I'm just going to put this one on its side as well. Roots go down, so that's how I'm going to plant it. So that the roots are facing down into the pot. And then I also had this little baby. Going to plant that. Oh my gosh, when this all starts to grow, it's just going to be a full, full, full pot. Oh my gosh. Uh, and then this little piece, just going to pop it into the side. So now that I've, I've hacked everything to bits, oh my gosh. Um, I've got all these little little baby bulbs as well. I'm just going to pepper those in. If they grow, they grow. If they don't, they don't. But at least I'm giving them a chance. Alright, so now I'm going to use the rest of my soil. This piece here I need to lift up a little bit more. Uh, I buried it a little too deep. Again, those cuttings that you lay on the side on their side, you don't want to have them buried completely. You want to have the top little portion uh, exposed. Unless it's in sphagnum moss, then you can bury them completely. I don't know what the reason is for that, but uh, that is what you can do. All right. So now we've got everything planted. I've used up all my soil. Everything looks fantastic. I won't need to water this in because the soil is quite moist as it is. Um, again, if you're having a problem with things staying upright, feel free to use a stake and, um, and hold things in place uh, because a plant really wants to feel secure. Let me move the camera up. So yeah, you might want to stake this up if, if they're wobbly because a plant really likes to feel secure. Uh, before it will start to uh, feel at home and, and start to grow strong. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, so if it's in a windy spot, actually uh, for now don't keep this in a windy spot. Actually, allocation in general don't like a windy spot because the leaves break and, and, uh, and dance around. A breezy spot, sure, but not a place that's going to be windy. Um, so this actually looks a lot nicer just as it is. Uh, that trunk looked really rude. Uh, it, I didn't, I didn't like it so much, and uh, the plant was just put to the side because it just looked dirty. Uh, but now that I've trimmed it all up, it looks really, really nice. It looks compact again, and uh, you probably have to do this every couple of years as the plant grows. Um, we'll have a little update on this in a couple of months to see what it's, what it's doing, how many growths are happening. Uh, I'm sure this pot is going to be very, very full by the end of the season. So uh, anyway, stay tuned for updates on this. Uh, there, there will be one. Um, probably in a couple of months, like I said. Uh, give it some time. It needs to establish, but I'm going to be very excited. Maybe on Instagram you'll see some, some posts sooner when things start to poke out of the, the soil. But yeah, show me what you're growing. I'd love to see your alocasia poly. Maybe yours is absolutely beautiful and huge and, and looks the best in the world. Uh, I'd love to see that. Tag me on Instagram, uh, uh, Plants and Things, as well as post to the Plants and Things What's Growing page on Facebook. Uh, that way everybody can see it. So anyway, uh, until next time, happy growing!